What's poppin' everybody? It's Ono Kage, otherwise known as the King. And I come to you with another exciting part two. What if Goku and Vegeta trained Naruto and Sasuke? So, with this part, I do want to let y'all know that it's ending pretty soon. I can predict about five more parts. So, shoot, we going to 20. And this specific what if. But, I think after that, there might be one more chapter talking about Boruto. And one to two more chapters talking about Boruto. Let's be frank, because I kind of like Boruto and where it's going in the manga. I don't want to go too far in it, simply because it's not done yet. And they're in a very interesting arc. And Naruto's doing some very interesting things inside of this arc. And I don't want to spoil them for you in case you're a manga reader. Um, in case you're not a manga reader and you're just watching the anime. Because the anime is now getting into the car organization arc. Um, I don't think that's a big spoiler because the anime talked about it and the manga talked about it. And if you don't know about it, it means you're not hooked up on it. So, what I want to give y'all now is some power levels to further demonstrate the differences between the characters. And why I was trying to explain to you why Sasuke is more powerful than Naruto in base. It's because Sasuke is just more skilled, but Naruto's transformations do up him a lot more. So, first, let's talk about Naruto. Naruto in his base state, as you can see, you know, compared to when he has stage mode on, it's pretty much double what he normally is when he has kcm1 he doesn't have the sage energy but he can sense emotions so that's what naruto is kcm2 um his fox god state and a new state that i'm introducing in this chapter um called fox god 2 you know kcm2 fox god 2 yeah you, you, you know all right so now let's talk about sasuke sasuke you know he doesn't have his eternal manga showing on yet so he just has mangekyo um sage mode he has a renegon as well as his heavenly attire Susano and I new set I'm making called his heavenly attire Susano evolved, where he shrinks him down and condenses the power inside of himself. So now it's more mobile, so that it's not as big and bulky. And now let's get on to Sakura. So Sakura is different because her powers aren't mainly for power, except for the last one, which is just a big buff to everything. Um, Sakura has her stage modes. What they do is they cut through defense. So for her, it was harder to chart her actual power, but I did make it pretty streamlined like that. Again, she's getting a new form in the chapter too. So, and now how they compare to their teachers. And as you can see, Goku and Vegeta are still above them, but they are catching up. These kids have been training their asses off for the past four years inside of Weiss's staff. They have God Key. So it isn't too unfair to assume that this would be their power levels especially being trained by the people who are this far above them now that they can actually train harder and they are learning more i would say this is safe to assume where they're at in their current god states they are just below go they are below goku and vegeta like the gap is still very very big like you know in dragon ball a power level difference of a hundred is a difference between being able to blow up the moon and not. Or was it 300? Well, whatever difference. A few hundred numbers is the difference between being able to blow up an entire planet and not. So in Dragon Ball, these differences are huge. They don't look that big on the graph, but they are very, very big. And here's the difference between them and versus their blue teachers and, and their current god states that I'm giving them in this chapter. And voila. Jesus, man. Like, I think that these are very good and very detailed. And you can see that their current power levels are so far above. I didn't add Haku, Jiraiya, and stuff on this list because they're relatively around each other. Since they don't have God Key, um, Haku would be slightly above Jiraiya because he's trained with Goku more than Jiraiya has. But Jiraiya hasn't been slouching either. He still has Sage Mo, and I haven't implemented that into the chapter. Same thing with Kakashi. All right, so... I talked your ears off long enough. I'm positive you want to get into the chapter. So, without further ado, let's get this party started. Woo! Oh. I'm about to go call me a brick, crushing your whole little shit. Oh. Mars so cold, I fill up on cop with the blow. Now I'm like, oh. she a brick on the low. Now she wanna suck on my toes. And I'm like, oh. you the find me as so. Now you wanna sit on my throat. No, bitch, I'm the king in the house so cold. Pull up on a nigga with the nine no coat. Spray and paint at the picture go. Kill me a nigga with a bite. Oh, 
Throw me down like a dummy. I can see her, I can see her. My sharing gun, don't let me run. I'm a demon, I'm a beast. No, I can't stop. I'll spin. Hey, whoa, hey, brushing the king of this shit. Okay, so I forgot how long this one was. Right, let's go. The fame and renown of the Leaf Village spreads, and thanks to that, the ninja villages hold a five kage summit out of fear from the impending force of the Land of Fire and their three pillars, who are required to join the summit. As Jiraiya gets this message, he brings his personal guard, Haku, and his assistants, Tsunade and Shizune. Goku and Vegeta also wish to come, hoping to find new students and promising warriors. Jiraiya agrees, hoping that with their inclusion, he can explain their presence and, and broker a peace deal between the five great nations. And that's when Danzo busts into the Hokage's office much to everyone's dismay, especially Sasuke, who's beginning to think that this is the proper time to act out his plan with Itachi, Naruto who can't stand a man who maliciously hurt his brother, and Haku himself who just hates being near Donzo. Jiraiya stares Donzo down as he says, uh, so to what do I owe this visit, Donzo? Donzo looks at the room of faces who he knows can't stand him, aside from Goku who is more interested as he speaks, Lord Jiraiya. I ask that you let me join you to the summit. Jiraiya declines, but that's when Danzo insists, saying, I've been investigating Orochimaru, and thus the Akatsuki, and I found that their leader has ties to you, Lord Okage. You let me join, and I tell you everything I know. Hearing this, Jiraiya can't possibly refuse. Information on the greatest threats of the Leaf and their leader has ties to him. He collects himself not to show Danzo any weakness as he speaks. And pray tell, how long have you sat on this information? Danza responds with a smile. You'll find out soon enough, if you let me join, that is. Jiraiya grumbles as he says, fine. And the nine of them set off towards the summit. Naruto stays back, wanting to stop by Hinata's place to see how she's handling becoming the leader of the Hyuga. When Haku and Jiraiya walk over to their brother and son respectively, as they playfully joke around about Naruto spending any free time he has with Hinata, Naruto blushes as he stumbles over his words before smiling and saying, well, Hinata is, she, she's, she's always been looking out for me, you know? Ever since we were kids and Goku Sensei found her spying on us while training and during our match the tuning exams and the two years inside we used to staff, she's always been there with me offering a warm smile. And now she's about to be her clan head. It's bound to be stressful, so I'm going to be by her side and return the smile she's been giving me for years now. Aww, the little brats in love. Shut up, Kurama. But everyone else is shocked, hearing how blatantly open Naruto is with his feelings. And Naruto can say that without any embarrassment. And Goku, hearing how Naruto thinks about her, walks over to Naruto and tells him that he should challenge her to a fight. At first, Naruto is confused about why his sensei would suggest this until Haku reminds everyone that, oh, that's how you met your wife, isn't it, Goku sensei? You married her right after the match. And that makes Goku laugh and Naruto's face turns bright red. And he then turns the situation around on Haku. And what about you? Haku is shocked. What do you mean, Naruto? As he smiles. I've seen Ino in the Hokage's office a lot lately, Haku. Haku's confused, asking what does he mean, and that's when Sakura sets up saying, Naruto, I'm surprised you notice. Haku, Ino likes you, stupid. He starts to blush, and Naruto is dumbfounded as he blurts out, what? I thought Haku liked Ino, <laughs> and Ino liked Sasuke. And that's when Sakura's face turns bright red as he hits Naruto on the head, exclaiming, you idiot, Sasuke's already, and that's when Sasuke cuts her off cutting in between the two and poking Sakura on the forehead with a gentle smile on his face. Sakura, that's enough. Now's not the time, and you know that's not the case. I still have to finish my mission. And Naruto, just instant transmission to us in about five minutes time. I estimate that's how long it takes. Sasuke sets off, and hearing this makes Vegeta think about Bulma. So Naruto goes to the Hyuga compound for a bit, and him and Hinata sit and talk, and as he says he's about to go on a mission, and she prepared a meal for him. Naruto, a boy who grew up all alone, just realized that this is really what family is. Haku, Goku, Sasuke, Sakura, Jiraiya, and Vegeta. He's overwhelmed with emotion. 
momentarily as he pulls her into a hug. He then pulls away saying, thank you. When I get back, let's have a sparring match. She's confused, but nods as he instant transmissions away with a big smile on his face. And Naruto leaves. She wonders why he wants to fight her. Meanwhile, what is usually days of travel is not more than a few minutes as they fly to the location with ease since they arrive so early. Goku, Naruto, Sasuke, Vegeta, Sakura, and Haku, who begin to spar as Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Shizune, and Danza formulate a plan to smooth this talk over. They notice that the subject will, the subject of discussion will be the Saiyans and their students. Tsunade speaks first. So, Jiraiya, how do you propose we start this conversation? Jiraiya responds, well, first, we introduce Goku and Vegeta. Donzo smiles, and if that doesn't work, we talk about your precious pillars. Shizune looks frustrated as she interjects and says, no, that won't be necessary. We'll just tell them about the impending threat Vegeta and Goku warned us about. Donzo is shocked. This is the first time he's heard of some threat. His spy should have alerted him. Reluctantly, he asks for an explanation while Jiraiya smiles, repeating Donzo's words to him. Oh, you'll find out soon enough, Donzo. This makes Donzo growl. He's about to walk away when he stops as he feels pressure that's, as he feels pressure coming from their fight. It forces him to stop in his tracks. He looks towards the sky where he can see the Saiyans and their students training with such intensity. That's when Haku flies down to Jiraiya, who asks why did he stop. He smiles responding, saying, I could tell they couldn't go all out when I was there. Jiraiya is shocked. He continues to watch them train as he finds he can't follow their movements any longer. They're just too fast, and now none of them can sense their key. As they stop holding back, they rush each other, sending shockwaves that can be felt throughout the earth. Jiraiya is amazed and terrified how far his students have grown. While Donzo was speechless, he thought he would be able to kill those kids if need be. But now seeing how outclass he is, he groans as he looks towards Jiraiya and Haku. He thinks, well, there are other ways to get what I want. Now into the sky, the Saiyans and the students pause for a moment. Their god forms are strong, however they're expending too much energy. They need to work on holding it in. They fly down to eat. Jiraiya is amazed at how far they've grown. He pulls them all into a group hug. Sasuke pulls away, but Naruto, Haku, and Sakura don't. After they relax, they go back to training. Goku forces them to meditate. As they do, they sense Gara approaching, but they do not break their meditation to greet them. They're focusing inward their god key and natural energy as they send the rest as they spend the rest of daylight meditating motionless. Thanks to their sage mode training, they add their god key into the sage mode, holding in the energy and manipulating their forms to fit more efficiently, impressing everyone around them and their teachers. Sasuke, taking his sage abilities to manipulate the energy and condense the power of the Susana, buffing his speed, defense, power, and stamina. Naruto taking his sage abilities to increase his sensing ability, his hermit style, and frog kumate. His martial arts is the best out of the three. He calls it the shelled frog style, manipulating his god key and natural energy around himself in combat, as well as further buffing his god state. Sakura takes her sage abilities and to release acid through her pores as she fights like a more powerful and lethal, lethal Mina Ashida. From my hero, making her punches more lethal they, than they already were. Blocking them is impossible. Your best option is to dodge if you can. Her power didn't get a huge increase. Her More her opponent's ability to guard and block got a massive decrease. What she does get is a buff to her speed and stamina and my tone of regeneration ability. It's enhanced with her god key. They square off Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura versus Goku and Vegeta. As they sense their students' power, they go into Super Saiyan Blue. The pressure they emit is immense and can be felt throughout the entire ninja world by those who can't even sense Ki. Team 7 is a little shaken by their teacher's power. They believe that Super Saiyan Blue is their strongest form, not knowing the full truth. And before you can blink, all five are gone. All that can be felt are multiple and consecutive shockwaves as Team 7 is giving their all against their teachers. Naruto is able to sense whenever they approach and dodge the strikes coming from Goku, keeping them distracted while Sasuke is using his Sharingan and speed to counter and evade Vegeta, keeping him distracted. 
leaving Sakura to power up an attack that can't be blocked. Sasuke then slashes at Vegeta, but he makes a Keyblade and blocks it. This clash creates thunderstorms, while Naruto creates three Sage God clones that are all attacking Goku at once. He knocks them away, but they don't dissipate, instead beginning to charge a tailed beast, Rasen Wave, as Goku charges the Super Saiyan Blue Kamehameha. They clash, and even with three clones, Naruto is being pushed back, but that's when Sakura comes down from the sky above Goku, with her fist oozing acid. Goku has to make a decision, take Sakura's attack or Naruto's. Knowing that Sakura's attack is far more dangerous, if hit directly, he takes Naruto's attack head on, using it as an opportunity to go Kaioken times 20. He then grabs Sakura's arm, throws her at Naruto. As Naruto dodges her attack, putting a clone in between her path to slow her down and catches her. Naruto can sense Goku is right above the two with the Kamehameha, and they're hit point blank. Not at the time to dodge or block, they are being forced back. Goku then rushes through his own Kamehameha, socking them both in the jaw, knocking them towards Sasuke, who uses Almighty Pool to bring them in and keep them in the air. As they gather their bearings, all five of them light out a light, let out a mighty roar, going max power. Vegeta goes Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. Naruto goes Kaioken times 10, as well as Kurama inside of him, because Naruto can't take all of that pressure by himself yet. And they all launch their strongest attacks. Goku, a Super Kamehameha times 20. Vegeta, a final flash. Naruto, a tailed beast Rasen wave times 20. Sasuke, a burning lightning flash. And Sakura, an acidic shimmering wave. They all collide, creating a massive explosion that expands from the center of the pillars. They give it their all, but Goku and Vegeta aren't even at their strongest forms yet. They power up further as they fill a battle high. They unconsciously open their dragon sage mode, quickly overpowering their students. As they begin to fall to the ground, Goku and Vegeta are there to catch their unconscious students with smiles on their faces. This type of training continues for the next four days as all five Kages arrive with their attendees. The Suji Kage arrives with Akatsuchi, Kurosichi, and Roji and Roshi. The Mitsukage arrives with Chojuro, Aoi, and a representative that has made big waves in the land of Waterfall, Fu. Since their resident Jinjuriki, Utakata, refused to come, not being a part of the uh, Mist Village anymore. The Raikage arrives with C, Darui, and Killer B. The Kazakage arrives with Timari Kankuro and one of Goku's students that took quick to his training, Shida. And with this, the Five Kage Summit begins. And as predicted, the first topic of discussion is the Saiyans and their students, and apparently their students' students, namely Roshi, Fu, namely Roshi and Fu. Sakura is a little disappointed that Utakata isn't present, but she keeps it to herself as the Raikage is the first to speak. Hokage, what is the reason behind your shinobi strength? The orange fox Naruto himself is rumored alone to have the strength of an army. The rest of the Kage are except Gar eagerly await Jiraiya's answer. While Naruto smiles that his reputation precedes him, Jiraiya stands, walking over to Goku and Vegeta. The strength of my Hashira of the Leaf is thanks to their own determination and the tutelage of these two men from another universe. The room goes silent, expecting Jiraiya to laugh from this joke when, when Onoki stares down Jiraiya as he exclaims that this is ridiculous you can't possibly expect us to believe that when Goku laughs saying, I know it sounds hard to believe, but believe you me, it's true. We fought against gods. We're only here because an angel friend of ours told us that thanks to your chakra, you guys, if you guys learned key, you could give us a run for our money. The Mitsukage's aide, Aoi and C speaks up. I don't find any reason not to believe them. I use my Byakugan and I can't see a chakra network in, in these guys. And C adds, and if this was some kind of trick or genjutsu, I should still be able to sense some chakra. So I'd say it's safe to take the Hokage at his word. And that's when Vegeta chimes in. Oh, it's true. You lot don't need to worry about how. Just know that we're only here to train potential opponents. We are not partial to the leaf. We just found them first and took a liking to these three. And in only four years your time, they've reached the realm of the gods. But don't you worry, 
We will train anyone from whatever village you hail from. And the only payment a San requires is a fight, food, and dedication to your training. The Kage sit in silence, except for A, the Raikage, who yells, The realm of the gods! In just four years? And what the hell is this saying? Goku laughs as he says, Listen, I know it sounds hard to believe, but it's true. Me and Vegeta are Saiyans, not human. And Tsunade chimes in. And to, get your, and to get your first question through your thick skull, the pillars can give you a demonstration. The three of them nod as Goku gives them a thumbs up. They yell, setting off an explosion of light. And as it settles, before them stands the pillars of Konoha. And the pressure they emit forces everyone to understand that they are leagues above them. Our sees their chakra network, and the flow of chakra inside them is insane. No human should be capable of this, except capable of this, all except A, who activates his lightning aura, which catches Vegeta's attention. He then rushes the pillars, but he was easily sensed out by Naruto, who catches his unblockable spear with ease. And with that, A frowns. Only one man has been able to dodge my attacks. You were not the only man to block it. And with such confidence, I could only believe you saw it coming a mile away. You are definitely leagues above us. You might actually be in this realm of gods. A then turns his attention to the Saiyans. And I can only assume you're stronger than them. Goku and Vegeta nod as Goku says, For now, yes, but honestly, they're catching up so quick. At that rate, at the rate they're improving, they might actually be able to give us a good fight sooner than later. Now, Jiraiya drops his tone. Now that that matter is settled, I want to talk to you about the impending threat Goku and Vegeta have warned us about. Naruto chimes in. Yeah, when I was transformed earlier, I could sense it. It feels like a billion of lies. It feels like a billion lies, screaming in pain. And when that said, the summit is attacked by an army of puppets. They are easily and they are easy enough to deal with. And as the fight is finished. Donza was gone. No one can see him. They hear clapping behind them and Roshi screams. As he's pulled into the eye of a masked man, it's Obito who goes by the alias Madara. He speaks in a calm voice. Well done, but I would expect no less from the Kage and their pillars. Tsunade and Shizune attack him at blinding speeds, but they merely phase through him. They yell, who the hell are you? As he speaks again. Now, now. I'm not here to fight. And as for my name, you may address me as Madara Uchiha. Tsunade is shocked. There's no way you're Madara. My grandfather said he killed you. The masked man laughs. Yes, my battle with the first Okage left me with many injuries. Damn near killing me, but I faked my death. And due to that, I have little power left. O Onoki yells. So why are you here, Madara? It's a long story. So for that, I'll sit and you'll listen. So he does, and he exclaims, I'm here to announce Project Tsukinomi. Aren't you tired of war? So I have graciously come up with a solution. All shall become one with me, and a complete possession that globally unites all. Sasuke yells, if you really are an Ichiha, how do you plan to pull that off? You are Itachi's little brother, correct? You have fine eyes. So you must have read the tablet as well. What tablet? Sasuke yells back. The Uchiha tablet that details the Sage of Six Paths and the Ten Tails, the culmination of all other beasts. The Sage once saved the world from this monster by splitting them into nine weaker beasts. I plan to collect them and resurrect the Ten Tails and enact Project Tsukiyomi by becoming the Jinjutsu of the Ten Tails to launch a Super Genjutsu that reflects my eye off the moon, creating the infinite Tsukinomi, a world without hatred or war, where everything will become one with me, all will be united. That is Project Tsukinomi. Gara speaks that peace. It's just an illusion. The masked man responds. And what peace have you created? Just face it. With you in charge, there is no hope for peace. 
I will bring true equality. Naruto yells, I don't care who you are, but don't you go disrespecting the notion of peace. When I unite the ninja world on the united front, there won't be a need for your type of peace. But why wait to unite the world? Cooperate with me. Give me the seven, eight, and nine tails, and no one else has to die. If not, the next time we meet, we'll be on the battlefield in the fourth great ninja war. He begins to whoop away, but not before saying, oh, and Hokage, you might really want to check on your village. One of your subordinates may have, oh, I said too much. That sentence sends a chill down their spines. Naruto yells, grab on, but Jiraiya looks around, yelling, where's Danzo? Sasuke says he'll find him, and he heads out. The rest of them instant transmission away to the Leaf Village and find it destroyed. Naruto goes sage mode. He can sense seven threats, the six paths of pain, and Toneri. He wants to rush in to handle the situation, but he can also sense survivors. And then under Toneri, he can sense the unconscious body of Hinata and Hinabi. He tells everyone that he has hostages, so they have to play this smart. Sakura questions how the hell did he beat Hinata? Haku says, most likely, he beat Hanabi first, and she let herself be captured. Naruto growls, calling them cowards. Jiraiya takes control of the situation. Naruto, Sakura, Goku, Vegeta, you are the fastest out of all of us. Can I ask you to save any survivors you see? While Tsunade, me, Haku, and Shizune keep, them, keep these threats busy. Naruto looks at his sensei, Pervy Kage. From what I can sense, you're about as strong as the orange-haired guys, but the one in the center, he's not in your league. As well as the guy holding Hinata, they're both people you should steer clear of. Haku adds, most likely the guy holding the hostages won't get involved. He wants to use them as leverage to keep you and Sakura away from him. To keep you and Sakura away from him. Jiraiya nods as he smiles. Naruto. I haven't just been sitting on my ass. I trained a bit too in my free time. The three of them fly down and the rest save the survivors while Jiraiya, Tsunada, Shizune, and Haku square off with the six paths of pain. As the diva path says, oh, Jiraiya sensei, how nostalgic. Jiraiya yells, what happened to you, Nagato? Nagato responds, all the pain I felt forced me to grow up. But I became much more than a man. I grew to a god. The pains attack, and Haku summons a crystal ice mirror to protect Jiraiya. It slows him down, but it's only until the Ashura path shoots a laser shattering the mirror. Jiraiya is able to dodge as he summons the Ma and Pa Toad, and he shoots a huge stream of water. As Haku gets behind Tsunade, launching her with a huge gust of wind, she, put she punches through the human path, tearing him apart. She is then tossed away by the diva path using almighty push. She summons Lady Katsu to catch her, breaking her fall as she leaps from the giant slug into the air, launching an axe kick that separates the pains make, and makes Toneri have to jump away. As they flee, Jiraiya runs through, a, Jiraiya launches a massive Rasengan, but the Predator path absorbs it. The Ashra path then rushes, grabbing Jiraiya by the throat. But, Ma, but the Mato casts a Genjutsu that forces him to lose his grip as Jiraiya uses Frog Kumite and throws him to the ground. Shizune then rushes over, making four Shadow Clones. They create a barrier that pins the Ashura path, no, who, the Praetor path to the ground. And Haku unleashes a freezing Kamehameha on the Ashura path, his back, encasing him in ice. He suffocates to death, enclosed in ice, two down, four to go. The animal path summons Sybris, and Jiraiya summons Gababunta. He unleashes, a, he unleashes the dog, but it splits in two as Gababunta slices it in half. The diva path is recharged. He pulls in Jiraiya, and that's when he notices the gate of hell being summoned and Ashra path walking out. Haku, the one on the left, he yells. Haku then rushes over using a crystal ice mirror at blinding speeds, throwing four Simbon needles, piercing the Naraka path, and the eyes heart and throat, ticking him down. But he then turns to Jiraiya to see him pierced in the shoulder with a chakra rod. 
and the pod toads unleashes a supersonic wave, a supersonic croak that forces Payne to let go of Jiraiya. He backs away as Shizune begins to kill him. As Tsunade destroys the platform the animal path is hiding on. As he falls, she makes a chakra scalpel that pierces him in the gut. She then throws his body off of her arm. The osteopath then grows six arms and plants himself, shooting a gigantic beam at Jiraiya and Shizune. Jiraiya isn't fully healed yet, but he launches a one-handed burning Ratsen wave. He's being overpowered, but Shizune continues to heal him. It's just not quick enough. The Ashura path runs through his own beam. He's left burned and scarred from Jiraiya's attack, but he's essentially a machine. He doesn't care. He rips off Jiraiya's arm. Haku and Shizune see this and rush to the Ashura path, but they are pushed away by the Diva path. Using almighty push, he charges a key and yells, Kami no Ike, or God's breath, as he shoots a small key blast that holds chakra rods inside of it. This connects with Jiraiya's chest and carries him upward. As the blast explodes, it catches Haku, Tsunade, and Shizune in an explosion. They all fall to the ground. As Jiraiya falls from the sky, his lifeless body hits the earth. As the Ashura path walks up to Jiraiya's body, and as he's about to bend down and grab Jiraiya, he launches up and launches a massive burning Rasengan, destroying the Asura path. As Jiraiya yells towards the final pain, I am Lord Jiraiya, the Holy Toad Sage. And as the Hokage, I will no longer permit you to destroy my village. The Diva Path stares at him. You still stand before me, knowing how hopeless it is. How weak you are. Why? Because, Nakata, I know you. You are a better man than this. You can't use your own pain to justify the death you cause. Sensei, even now, at death's door, you still speak your childish rhetoric. The world will never know peace, as long as humans and their greed exist. Even you would kill with eyes full of hatred if anyone threatened your precious village. How can a hypocrite like you even speak about peace? Dry goes silent and pain speaks. So you won't answer. Dry then falls forward. He lost too much blood. Pain speaks again. No, you can't answer. He then throws a black sphere in the air that collects rubble and debris until it's a gigantic meteor the size of the moon as he yells, well, you will become nothing, just like your hypocritical ideals. Planetary devastation. The meteor begins to crash down towards the earth, but it's destroyed by Naruto with a single punch and the debris is melted by Sakura. Naruto then rushes over to Jiraiya with tears in his eyes as he yells, Jiraiya sends his name. Jiraiya coughs up blood. Naruto, is everyone safe? Naruto says yes. Apparently Kakashi Sensei kept everyone kept everyone safe, keeping pain busy while they handled the puppets. Thank goodness. I'm so proud you were my pupil. But I have one last lesson for you. Naruto, with tears in his eyes, pain is interested to hear what Jiraiya has to say as well. I know you might be angry. Now, but don't waste time with grudges and hatred. Fill your heart with love instead. Jiraiya attempts to place his hand on Naruto's shoulder, but the life leaves him, and he falls down to the ground. Naruto puts his hand, Naruto puts his sensei's hands on his chest, and he says, I will, Pervy Sage. He then turns to Pain and Toniri, activating KCM1, and Pain speaks. Now you know pain. And does this make you wish for revenge? And without a word, Naruto is in between the two. They're shocked by his speed. They thought the hostages would keep them safe. He then punches pain in the side, launching him into a boulder. He then chops Toniri in the neck, knocking him unconscious, grabbing Hinata and Hanabi from him. He then lays them both gently on the ground. He powers up to his max, Fox God too. He's able to sense a connection between the Renegon. He then grabs the fake pain and flies towards the real one at blistering speed, his eyes red with rage as he destroys the fake tree made by Conan. He stands before Nagato and says, as Nagato says, 
You didn't answer my first question. Are you here for revenge? Will you take my life in exchange for your sensei? Naruto stares at him. I do want to kill you, Pain. I want to kill you so bad I can't stop shaking. But that's not why I'm here. First, I want to know why. Nagato and Konan are confused, but Nagato speaks. Why? Well, I created the Akatsuki to end this chain of hatred. Naruto yells, Yeah, well, Madara said the same thing, but it's not that easy. Just snapping away pain doesn't mean anything. The scars will always remain. But the scars will help you understand how far you've grown. Pain yells back. Jiraiya often said the same thing. However, reality is too far distant from those ideals. So can you really believe in what Jiraiya said after seeing reality for what it's worth? It is pain. Reality is hatred. It's loss. It's fear and it's greed. As long as mankind exists, so will these. Naruto stares pain in the eyes. All those negative feelings can be overcome with hope and aspirations for a better day. And I truly believe people can rise above that if they just take time to understand each other and not let their own personal pain justify causing pain to others. All you did was fall into the own cycle you aimed to stop. After hearing that, Jiraiya remembers his time with, Nar Nagata remembers his time with Jiraiya and Yahiko and how Conan always stayed by his side, but he has to give it one last push. How do you know some greater pain won't come and trap you in this cycle as well? That's when Naruto stands defiantly. Because I have experienced pain as well. And though my pain and through my pain, I am able to help others who believe in me. And now I believe in myself and my sensei. And I will never lose faith in myself. That's just who I am. Nagato smiles. You really are a strange guy. I think I shall try believing in you as well. He cast the Rene Rebirth Jutsu, bringing back all the lives of those lost throughout this fight. He then sacrifices his life. Naruto then looks at Konan. He powers down. Do you want to come with me? I'm positive that Madara guy won't be too happy that you guys just betrayed him. Though the leaf will keep you safe, especially if you help rebuild and answer any of our questions. She agrees having nowhere to go. So her, for now, her and Naruto fly back. And while this was happening and everyone was waking up, Jiraiya still is missing an arm. And Sasuke is in pursuit of Danzo as he sends a black crow to Itachi with a note that reads, Brother, it's time. Danzo will be on his way soon. And I think that's where we're going to end this chapter for today. I hope you don't hate me. I know it got really exciting near the end. Um, but next chapter is going to be about Sasuke and Itachi. Well, more Itachi versus Danzo, but Sasuke on the sidelines because he's been told by his brother not to help. So, next chapter is going to be exciting. And then after that big fight, there's going to be some more developmental stuff that's talking about the war and most likely the beginning of the war and Naruto and Hinata's relationship going further. All right. So did you like it? Did you love it? I hope you did. I worked pretty hard on this one. I know I said it would come out uh, today, but probably come out tomorrow. Um, I fell asleep after work. I'm sorry. I couldn't finish editing and I passed the hell out. So now I'm editing it now and I just added these notes in here at the end. I know that I'm probably disappointed a few people, but I hope that the work that I did on the uh, power levels and the story itself and getting the characters animations and stuff, I hope that makes a lot more sense and it makes it a bit better. So without further ado, I kind of just want to go on to my favorite part of the day, the commenter callouts. There you go. Commenter I want to call out is Hydrogen Gaming, who says, we want Ultra Instinct Naruto and Goku against Moro. So... You're kind of going to get that, and you're kind of not. I am 
like letting it go that Naruto is the best martial artist out of the three. Sasuke is the best with swords, obviously. The boy loves swords. He's like trunks in that regard. But I'm planning on something. And if you can find that comment in the suggestions on that video, I can't tell you what video it is because it's a huge spoiler. And I dropped it just for this dude. If anyone else sees it, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to spoil it now, though. So let's go to the next comment, though. Bop. And this one comes from Red Dragon X, who's part talking about part 14 reclamation. And he says, I can't wait for part 15. I hope you make it real soon. I love this what if. I watched all the parts in one day. Keep making more. Also, will Naruto and Sasuke and Sakura help Goku and Vegeta fight Moro? And yes, they're gonna help because the Moro is attacking their universe, so they're gonna protect, they're gonna protect their own universe. So it's gonna turn into a all-out war against Moro eventually because Moro will be the biggest threat and he doesn't give a fuck about anyone. No one else matters to him but his crew and they don't really matter because he, he'll willingly kill his own men. That, that doesn't care. He doesn't care about that. So with this, I do have a very interesting way that they're going to win. I've already planned out the fight and I planned out what's going to happen in the Boruto manga. Uh, Boruto manga in the Boruto episode I'm going to do later. So Moving on to the next Piznart. And I meant comment. I don't know why I said that. And this next comment comes from Z King 28 Soldier. He asks, can people please like this? Because if they don't, he won't continue it. And honestly, I'm not doing like goals because it's it's not that it's counterproductive. It's very productive and it's a very helpful thing to do. But I don't think that like goals will be very um, advantageous for me right now because I'm more going off of views because I feel like if people watch it and how long they watch it kind of just signifies like they like it, you know? I feel like views are just an easier way to talk about it. I don't think likes really matter. I think likes get it more noticed, but I just kind of really care about if people actually liked it and watched it. So just watch the parts if you like them and they get a lot of views, know that I'm going to continue with it as fast as possible. I do work like crazy it's peak season and christmas merry christmas by the way hope all of you have a fucking awesome christmas um merry christmas um but yeah i am doing that so i'm more focused on that right now more so than likes i want more comments and i want more views i guess is what i care about so don't worry about like goals those might be implemented further down in the future if not then so be it you know, I care about views. I want people to actually watch and enjoy the content. So let's go to the last comment. And this one comes from the last part that I did to the What the Uzumaki Clan Survives. And it's hitting us from, oh my God, his name, Luigimen Oten. Luigimen Oten. And it says, I'm excited for the next part. I like this a lot. I'm also going to add another comment because I messed up the names. It was Saitha Pushima, your name. And it says, will Naruto learn the flying Raijin Jutsu in this what if? And the answer to that one is, yeah, his dad's around. I'm definitely planning on having him learn the flying Raijin. I think that's gonna be very important to his character coming on, having a Jutsu from his dad. Cause in the next chapter, stuff happens, stuff happens. Also, I wanna talk about the what if Frieza turned good one. Next part's coming out soon to that one. Also, the Naruto rap. That rap is very fun to write for. I was going to try to show you all a sneak peek, but I don't know what's up with YouTube. I guess I can't do it, sadly. So if you want to see a sneak peek of that one, go to my Instagram. I'll post it there. If not, I hope you guys have a fan flipping tastic day. Um, Merry Christmas again, by the way. I hope you have some nice Christmas. Happy holidays. I'm probably going to spend some time with family. Um... If we can, you know, wear our mask and stuff. COVID's still ain't over. It's probably worse during the winter seasons because some people say that the cold will freeze the disease. I feel like those people are talking out the ass. But if not, hell, maybe we'll get lucky and we can actually spend time, actually spend quality time together. Um, other than that, please like, comment, and subscribe. Onokage out. Nobody speak, nobody get choked.
If we run the home, it's gonna get smoked. No time for the lame ass jokes. I'm the GOAT. You a gringo when that story's been told. What song? I make money, moves control in every view. Oh no. You got hella proof, but no one's helping you. What's wrong? Now you on your own, you really want to smoke. Oh no. Chico really done it wrong. What's wrong? The hello meta in the sky list, bro. Wow. Keep talking crazy, I might go post up. Yeah. Always trouble when they go too far. Yeah. Nobody messing me familiar. Yeah. Ah. Father.